Hi everyone. Welcome to American Musical Theater class. I'm Dr. Paula Muncy and I'll be facilitating your journey through the American Musical Theater this summer. I hope you enjoy musicals because you're going to be thinking about them a lot and watching several. The question I first have for you is, uh, what is American Musical Theater? Well, first of all, it's American. We could be lo looking at musical theater from in other countries, but we're not. We're sticking with just what's here in this country. We will be looking at the influence of other countries on, on our American musical theater um, because, you know, no man is an island and no country is an island when it comes to the arts. So it'll be an interesting thing to see how it all developed. But you think if you think about it, mu American musical theater runs the gamut from plots, silly plots, uh, comedic things, girls in scantily clad clothes doing high kicks to very serious plots, very serious dance, ballet, and on the other hand you've got hip-hop, you've got all, all different kinds of tap dancing and you know popular dance types, ethnic dances, so it's hard to define. You can't just say there's one dance, one music tradition, one plot idea in American musical theater. Um, another thing is that we have a variety of musical styles, from classical to jazz to pop to ethnic, and in some cases you have like classical rock, for example Phantom of the Opera was one of the first ones to embrace that that genre, so anybody can find whatever music they want in a musical. And possibly the, the most interesting difference to me is that some of these shows can be intimate, small, done in very you know tiny venues, to huge blockbusters that can barely make it on tour because they're so intricate. So we have a lot of different things to look at and all of these are legitimately called American Musical Theater. We're going to be looking at how the American Musical Theater developed and it did come from European roots for the most part, European operetta and also um, ethnic immigrant music, dance and themes the English music hall tradition of single variety acts and a lot of comic, comic routines, so you'll see all those in the early days. Another thing we'll be looking at this semester is what's the difference between a significant musical and a successful musical? Sometimes they're the same and other times they're not at all, so we'll talk about that. Who were and are some of the most important creators and performers? We'll be looking at that. And finally, and not, and not least important, is how does American musical theater both reflect and lead social values? In Unit 1, you're going to be finding a little bit of supplementary material that's not in your textbook um, about the 19th century English operetta creators Gilbert and Sullivan. So be sure to, to look that over. In your textbook and in the documentaries that we'll be watching, uh, we're going to be looking at the first chapter and the first half of the second chapter. So, the book is called Broadway, the American Musical Theater, and that's exactly the same name as the documentary, which aired on PBS a few years ago. You'll be watching that documentary spread out through about the first four or five weeks of the semester, as well as watching several uh, movie musicals. Unfortunately, we don't have every musical that was that I'd like you to see. We don't have a filmed stage version, but we do have a few, so that'll be exciting to see the difference between how somebody does that compared to turning it into a Hollywood movie. So that'll be interesting for us to look at. So anyway, in Unit 1, we're going to be concentrating on the very early years. Um, we're going to look at how the ethnic variety stages uh, came into account here. Um, we'll be looking at the influence of Tin Pan Alley, which was an actual place where uh, popular music people could, um, well, composer could uh, could go and play at sit at the piano and play his music and try to sell it to people, uh, sort of like our internet today. We're going to look at the development of the New York Theater District, which eventually became what we just call Broadway. The Ziegfeld Follies will play a, a big role in Unit 1. The theme of glorifying the American girl. So everything from beautiful women, lavish sets and costumes, to uh, actual, a lot of comedy acts. So we're looking at, at focusing on someone like Fanny Bryce, who was a Yiddish comedian. 
Will Rogers, who was a cowboy comic, and Burt Williams, who was the first highly successful and respected African American to be on the legitimate stage. We'll be looking at uh, Victor Herbert, who was um, a composer in the American operetta tradition. So here we're getting away from pop music and we're doing operetta. So a totally different style. In the 1920s, as we move into chapter two, we'll be focusing on performers like Al Jolson and the idea of musical reviews. They're going to be coming more into focus in the 1920s. And finally, in the 1920s, we're looking at Shuffle Along, which was the first commercially successful African-American musical. So that's an overview of what Unit 1 will have in store for us. Uh, we will be also watching and responding to one musical in this unit, Funny Girl. It came out in 1964, and as I said earlier, it is based on the life of Ziegfeld Follies star, Fanny Bryce. Ray Stark, who was her son-in-law, produced the show, and they were fortunate to find Barbara Streisand to star in it. She was in both the Broadway version and also in the movie version, so we get to watch the original star in this movie. Why are we watching Funny Girl? Why aren't we going back and watching something you know that was actually done in the 1920s? Well, first of all, it has an, a wonderful look at the Ziegfeld Follies days and what was going on there. Um, it's also got a lot of three-dimensional characters in it, and so I thought right off the bat you'd probably prefer to watch something that has a great love story and a lot of depth to it. Funny Girl was a significant show because, first of all, it was successful. So it's one of those where the two married together, right? Um, it was such a wildly popular the theatrical production that they actually had to bring in more seats and, and put them down in the orchestra so people could watch, more people could come in to watch the show. It was a reflection of the times, for sure. Um, while there was no literary source, which is unusual for a musical, you're going to see a lot of shows that are based on books or movies, but it was based on, as I said before, the life of Fanny Bryce. Um, it also does a beautiful job portraying the lavishness of the Ziegfeld Follies and also the vaudeville style routines. So I think that you'll all enjoy that. Another thing that's important about this show is that the music was scored beautifully. It's very dynamic and it takes full advantage of Barbara Streisand's exception, exceptional and unique voice. They made the choice to actually write most of the songs. In fact, for the uh, original Broadway version, all of the songs were written originally for Barbara Streisand, and they didn't do any of Fanny Bryce's original material, which I thought was interesting. However, in this film version that you're watching, two of Bryce's songs were inserted in it, My Man and Secondhand Rose, so you can keep an eye out for that. And finally, it's significant because it's one of those instances where a star is born. Barbara Streisand was catapulted to stardom from this uh, Broadway show and then the subsequent movie. Her record sales soared. She had huge television audiences for like specials that, that she would do. So um, it was a very important show. And also, I think it accurately depicted a lot of what went on in the Ziegfeld Follies days. So I hope you enjoyed that. Well, that's about all I have for this first video chat, and um, I'll see you online.